Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shamika and this is Check the Rhymes. I am super excited that you're here. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all, I am super hype about today's show because one of my absolute favorites and an old friend is in the building, Noel Gordine. Yes, y'all, he is back with new music and we're gonna talk about it, talk about what he's been up to over the past few years because it's been a minute since he gave us an album. I need to know when is the next one, right? So stay tuned, you definitely don't wanna miss today's show. I have Noel Gordine in the building, y'all. Welcome, Noel. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. Hey, I'm on, on I'm on the right side of the ground, so I can't complain at all. <laughs> and I'm on check the rhymes with my girl Sha. So that's what's up. That's exactly. It's you know, actually, technically, you should have been the first guest because <laughs> you were helping me yeah. kind of kick kick this idea around. It wasn't, of course, yep. it was supposed to be a website, but <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But hey, that was a few years ago, and uh, yeah, I was supposed to, but it's all good. You know, we catch up. It's it's nothing. It's nothing for us. <laughs> so I'm excited about your new music, but first I want to check in because a lot of people, one of the biggest questions was, where has he been? What has he been doing? I mean, I know you've been doing, you know, singles here and there, but yep. catch us up. What have you been doing since, when did the last album come out, 2014, something like that? Yeah, um, I mean, I just... I've been kind of freelancing, just going through life. Uh, I had lost my pops in 2020, so that was tough for me. I was, around that time, I was looking to get back in and and, mm -hmm. and really buckle down and come up with some dope stuff. And I've been working all the while, mm -hmm. but you know that hit me really hard. And and like, yeah, I was down. I was down and out for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, but this like this EP here was like really the first pieces of works that I started picking back up after I, you know, climbed back out of that, that slump, um, from, from losing my pop. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm really happy about it. It, it feels good. Um, I think everybody else is going to dig it because it, it's, it's, it's kind of out of my comfort zone, but it's not all the way out of my comfort zone. Right. So, so it's, it's, it's a little, it's something new for Noel, but it's still Noel. So, okay. you know, uh, so it's not going to alienate my, my folks that, that been with me from the gate. Okay. Well, first I want to offer, I mean, I, I, sure I offered them on online, but I want to say con my condolences again to you. And a lot Thank of people, you. I feel like over the past few years, they can relate to losing yeah. someone, especially during this pandemic. And it's like, it's been rough. Yeah. yeah so how, how did you climb out of it? Was it just music that kind of pulled you out? Cause maybe some, the, however you came out of it can help somebody else. Yeah, just talking about them, you know, just just remembering the good times and and with my family, my mom's brother and sister, all my nieces and nephews and cousins and stuff, because he was so prominent in the family and he was like second fathers to a lot of my cousins and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. So it was it was really just talking about them and remembering and and uh, you know uh, and just getting that reassurance from everybody, like he, you know, you did him proud, and I hope I did him proud, you know, while he was here and and just 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 being good with it you know what I mean and, and yeah. hoping he is in a better place and, and knowing he's in a better place no pain and, and mm -hmm. such so you know so I'm, I'm I mean I'm I'm good with it now you never forget you right never, never ever ever forget and it, it's never out of your mind but you know you kind of move on and, and mm -hmm. um kind of contentment you know what I mean yeah it's like a, a new normal I think that's how at least when my right. grandma died that's how I described it as a new normal you just yeah. you don't forget you're still grieved but you adjust yeah you grieve every single day that's yeah oh crazy yeah about, you know what i mean yeah but you do it in your own way and it's uh it gets a little bit easier yeah day. yeah well i hope that that helps those watching um you know that that yeah. may be going through this and and don't know kind of what to do i think you know and yeah. again i think it just varies from person to person on on how to handle it absolutely because you feel helpless in a way you know there's like yeah. nothing you could do and, yeah and uh and, and that was another tough part for me because I was here in California mm. and he was in, in Alabama and I was, I had just been there a week before. You know what oh I mean? Oh goodness, yeah. I was going to stay. I was going to stay there for another couple of weeks, but you know, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's just what it is and, and not being able to really say goodbye and all that. I gave, that was, that was a tough part. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad you picked up music and, and and found that as a way to kind of help you get out. Like you mentioned, this the single that or the EP get to you. Yeah, you know, I've seen people asking, "Are we going to get a video?" I know the lyric video is out, but are we going to get a video? <laughs> uh, 
I'm hoping. I mean, we got the, you know, we got the treatment and the concept and everything, but you know what it is nowadays, Sha. Uh, it's it's the it's the budgets, man. The budgets yeah. are crazy. Um, we try to really allocate the budget so first and foremost so people can hear it. So you, yeah. you know, you gotta push it at radio, gotta push it at print, gotta push it with y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, d- just trying to do the things the right way. Uh, yeah. and, and, and just try to utilize the, the, the assets we have in the, in the best possible way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so ho- hopefully we can get one shot <laughs> because I came up with the treatment and it's, it's crazy. You know, it's, oh, I think it's I really wait. dope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm hoping we could do that. I hope. So you, you mentioned that the song is a little out of your comfort zone. When I'm listening to it, I'm like, this sounds like classic you. <laughs> so yeah. how is it out of your comfort zone? I mean, not so much. I wouldn't say so much this record, but there's other records on the project. But this one right here was just purely a vibe. You know what I mean? It's kind of, uh, and you know, I, I have a sense of humor. So the, the way I came up with it is it's almost like you see that person that's gravitationally pulling you towards them, but you yeah. can't never get there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's like kind of a thing where you get to the spot and it's like the spot <laughs> seems to just zoom out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So that's what I came up with uh in my in my head and uh you know i had to throw in a in homage to my man chadwick bozeman for for you know losing him so soon and uh mm-hmm. you know prowling like a panther and all of that so there's a yeah. there's a few things in there that that uh you know just kind of i don't know made me feel good and then yeah. there's a vibe of the record and and i, I just think it's because it, it's not quite a, a dance record but at right. the same time, it's like a groove record, but you can still dance to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it's just a certain vibe with it. And that was the, the, the that's the reason why we really picked it to be the first coming out mm-hmm. of the new project. Yeah. So tell me about the new project, though. <laughs> like, when are we going to get it? <laughs> uh, I think, you know, with the single doing what it's doing now, it looks like it's moving up pretty good right yeah. now. Radio, we we uh we jumped in on the hot, you know, the hot R&B. Mm-hmm. chart at i think we jumped in at 49 so right now it's at 30 i think it's at 36 or 35 or something like that so it's jumping up and, and it's moving and we got we got bullets and, and there's spins being added more yeah. radio stations and all of that but we're looking at the holiday time around okay. the, the around the holidays and uh hopefully people won't be sick of the record by then and if they are we got it we got another hot one to to put on the griddle so um you know it's it's uh it's just, I didn't want to get, because sometimes I got to be, I'll get in a rut with making records. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if it's just me, <clears throat> I'll get in a rut and I'll, I'll have my, the way I do and make, cook up records and, and the way I write and all of that kind of stuff. So I, I this time I was really open with, with having co-writers mm-hmm. and people that I, I'm really comfortable with. So Kanita Rogers and uh, Marquise Green from Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I was that I worked with a lot. I felt comfortable with them and they dope is, is all get out. And uh, and I had okay. tracks and, and was introduced by Hill Street Soul, who I worked with, mm-hmm. and uh, by my man Antonio Johnson out here in California. So he sent me a slew of, uh, of tracks. And man, <laughs> just about all of the ones he sent me are on the project. And oh, Wow. And it was all initial, all initial ideas, Sha, that I had for these tracks that I went with. Mm-hmm. You know, so first when I hear a track, I'll put down an, an initial idea. So it's like the first 10, 10 minutes that I hear the track, I'll put down an initial idea and come up with an initial mm-hmm. joint. And then I'll try to reroute it a couple of times to see if it, if, it, if right. anything else sticks. But they were all ended up being the initial ideas that I had within the five, first five, 10 minutes of her hearing the tracks. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so it, it was some magic, and it was. I think it was supposed to happen, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it feel real good. It feel real how many good. how many songs are on the on this project? Six, six joints, six joints. I mean, I was gonna do five, but I wanted to step it to six because you go to seven, it's only it's too short of a EP for a whole LP. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, and and it's and it's a double EP deal, so I'm coming with with one right after this one as well. So okay, um, so I wanted to do enough so. When you put them together and there might be some bonus tracks on, on, on these joints too. So, okay, you know, so yeah. So okay. there's six, six joints. I was like, you just going to give us a little snack. <laughs> but then you, <laughs> yeah. think you said it's, it's a double one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Another one after. <laughs> yep. 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 
and I'm working with other artists. Like I said, Mesa, I did some joints with Mesa okay, in yeah, Hill yeah. Street Soul, of course. Yeah. Uh, did some stuff with Jaguar Wright. Um, and I'm, and I got a couple of other things in the, in the oven right now. So, you know, I can't let those names out the bag yet. Yes, you busy, busy, busy. See, people was thinking you just at home chilling nah. watching Netflix or something. You busy. Nah, <laughs> we music makers are always making music, and that's just the way it is. You know, uh, it, it, there's been a whole lot of things going on. I just moved um, a little further from L.A. and came up there, as they say, up the hill uh-huh. uh, into the high desert here in Victorville. And uh, But, yeah, doing that, getting the house together, getting my studio, the home studio together and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, th- yeah. things have been going on. And we music makers, we never really stop making music. We're always making music. My phones are full of <laughs> material. So where do you get your, you know, like you said, when you hear the the track and it's like the first 10 minutes, you're like writing whatever you're, whatever you come up with. Or mm-hmm. if you like, where do you get inspiration from besides maybe just that track? Like, is it just because I know for me as a writer, I could be walking outside. Like, I keep thinking about like, why does they keep putting their trash in front of the mailboxes? <laughs> so I'm like, I need to write about that because that's tearing my nerves up. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 I mean, like you said, it comes from everywhere, really. Uh, it, as long as we keep our eyes and ears open, uh, it really comes from everywhere. Uh, my family, you know, they all call me. It seems like I'm the one that they they come to. I'm like Grand Central Station. Uh, and uh, they all come to me and, and run, you know, thoughts and emotions and all of that through me. Yeah. Um, and I use it. Um, that, if it's, uh, I'm a people watcher. Whenever I'm out, I'm watching people and seeing behaviors and all of that kind of stuff. I'm a big movie watcher, avid. I love movies. Mm-hmm. I'm a movie buff. So, you know, a lot of movies, I take inspiration from there. Uh, everywhere, everywhere, really, like anywhere I can get it, and it's free, and it's uh, unsolicited. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it from anywhere, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so anywhere, you know, anywhere you could grab something and hold it and write it down and jot something down, and and, and it could jog somebody's memory of, of in their life or past or you know something that's presently going on or, or just anything to pull at the at the heartstrings. Okay. Okay. Um, I realize I'm like, I ain't even going by the list of questions I had. I just. <laughs> it's all good. We just... <laughs> um, for those that don't know, I mean, if they, if they're, if they've been a long time fan, they know this story, but for the new people that are kind of tuning in and just now hearing your song or just happen to be scrolling and land on check the rhymes, tell everybody how you got your start in the business. It was really just making records. It first came from the love of music. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was that was being with my pops all the time. I mean, he, he used to make those, um, you know, those 300 minute Maxell tapes, of black and gold yeah. joints of all soul records. And, uh, and, and that, that, that was always synonymous with, with riding down south to where my family was from, the Mississippi. Yeah. From Boston, we would, every summer we would, you know, it was pretty much a convoy rolling down the highway mm-hmm. to go down south. To Mississippi and that music, that soul music, you know, it, it kind of became synonymous with me and my pops being with my pops, mm-hmm. rolling in the old Pontiac Granville and uh, and going down south. I mean, listening to, you know, Brooke Burke, uh, Brooke Benton and, and uh, Solomon Burke and yeah. Johnny Taylor, Tyrone Davis, all of those, my favorites. Um, he loved them and I loved them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, growing up, and going through the years, then the hip hop and the new Jack Swing and all of that kind of stuff came yeah. in. And me and my brother had bunk beds back in the day. So he would be on the bottom bunk and I'd be up on the top bunk and supposed to be asleep, but he's singing Ready for the World to his girls and, <laughs> you know, singing the guy and the, and the troop and all of that kind of stuff. It was corny and his voice wasn't dope, but, you know, but it, it, it had a big impact on me. So, yeah. you know, at night I, I would stay awake and be like, hey, you're going to have more calls tonight? So I knew the calls, man, he was going to be singing and playing that music. You know what I mean? So uh, I started memorizing all the songs. So it, it was just crazy. It's just the way it, it happened for me. And I just yeah. love music. And it, it always affected me. Even when I was super little, it affected me in a way where everybody, you know, my pops was always like, there's something wrong with that boy. He shouldn't be, you know, he shouldn't be grooving <laughs> like this. And I was four and five years old. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but, but it just had a hold on me. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, just coming up through the years after that, I always said it, I make music. I want people to feel like I feel when I'm yeah. listening to this music. So yeah. that's always been my, you know, prime directive. And uh, just coming up through the years, that's what it was. And then, and then it just got, I just got more passionate, and more passionate with it. So when I'm listening to music, it's crazy because, you know, my family and friends and all of that would be around me. I'd be like, yo, you hear that? Listen to that baseline walk. You know, and everybody else can't hear it like I do. So after a while, they'd be like, all right, Noel. Yeah, yeah, yo, I hear it. I hear it. You know, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not listening. You're hearing it, but you're not listening. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just dive into, into music like that. And it's mm -hmm. been like that for a while. Okay. Yeah. Cause when you mentioned that, I was just thinking when I listen to your music, I could totally see just riding down the road, like right going down. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the South, but going down further South, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, my brother always said that too. He was like, yo, you got a lot of good riding music. Yeah. And really, you don't, you know, when I'm making it, making music, and and although I don't play all the instruments and stuff, but I have my hands in a lot of the stuff. I'd be like, I want it to sound like this. Or I want you to do this. Or you know what I mean? Yeah. But he's like, yo, your music is is all your music is riding music. And it it's is, crazy yeah. because a lot of the music that I grew up to is is riding music. You know what I mean? And uh yeah. it's crazy. I don't know how that gets into the mix, but I guess it does, and it's a good thing. Like, especially when um the river came out, it was like yeah. You know, I remember thinking, like, who is this? Like, you yeah. know, like, and <laughs> hearing it all the time on the Steve Harvey Morning Show during my commute mm -hmm. at that time, I was, you know, it was riding music, riding to work, yeah. listening to it. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody said. Everybody was like, who is this? You know what I mean? So whenever I was on the road and I'd see Anthony Hamilton or, or Jaheim when I was in uh, Jersey uh, with KG, I'd be like, yo, y'all trying to take all the records, man. Take no right for all the records. They was like, nah, man, yo, they was like, yeah, a lot of people asking that, like, you sang that record? Could you do that record at the show? And they're like, that's not me, that's Noel, you know? So it's like, yeah, everybody was asking who, who it was. Yeah, I thought it was, was like, like an me. older, an older I'm dude. Like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an older yeah. dude, honestly, because yeah. I was like, that's like this song's like full of soul and like you know yeah like what what yeah. how what is it people are always the things they say about Anthony Hamilton like it's like soul food like cornbread and greens all that mixed yeah up. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah right right yeah and it, it's crazy you know uh I remember we was doing a, I was doing a record with Mike City um and this was when hip hop had taken over um mm -hmm. music at, at Sony and uh I was singing because I was telling him I could put rasp on it or I could make it clean. And he was like, yo, try it with the rasp. And I did it with the rasp and hip hop was like, yo, you can hear the slave in his voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I don't think, I don't want people to say that, but but yeah, like, they, you know, a lot of the coming up through the years and, and yeah. just practicing over and over again, practicing that Otis, that Otis Redding gruff and all of that kind of stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, um, but yeah, uh, I just practiced and practiced and practiced and came out, you know, let people know what I was doing when I was younger, when I was comfortable with it, because I'm a Virgo and I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Shout out Virgos. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Virgos. But, um, but yeah, I wasn't ready. I was going to, I wasn't going to come out until I was absolutely ready yeah. to let people know that I was serious about my craft and mm -hmm. really passionate and, you know, but yeah, I mean, that's the, it's just just putting in the time, you know, just putting yeah. in the time. And that's for a lot of the young artists out there too. putting in the time and just remaining you mm -hmm. and putting as much of you. Uh, you can have, you know, influences and all of that kind of stuff, but remain you because everybody else is taken. You don't feel like um, and I'm now I'm freestyling because I, I just am thinking about what I see on Twitter all the time is people are saying like a lot of the artists, the newer artists sound the same. Mm -hmm. They, they say some of, them, some of them, the women at least sing in cursive. And so you can't understand what they're saying, <laughs> but I, but I'm just curious, like what you think about these newer artists, do you think they all sound the same? And do you think it is that whole, like they haven't put in the work. It's just like, Oh, I can sound like this, like so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and put this out and people will like it. Yeah, it's like it's like lazy industry right now. You know, yeah. everybody it's like a conveyor belt. Everybody's sounding the same. Like I, I can't tell a lot of these females apart at all. Me either. I just can't. <laughs> and it's horrible that you can't because <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'd be like, who is this? It sounds the same. It sounds like the last three records we heard. You know right. I mean? And uh, I mean, I can't say that for the males because of the, the, the males, you can at least tell a tone. But I think there's so much um, engineering going into a lot of, a lot of the, these artists today mm-hmm. that... Nah, you can't yeah. tell them apart at all and it's mm-hmm. like and i think a lot of it is coming from you know the execs mm-hmm. uh in these in, in these labels but yeah then again you're right it's a lot of the artists that feel that there's a formula and they want to stick to the formula just slapping yeah. that acme you yeah. know that acme sticker on it and just putting it out and the sad thing is a lot of the time it's still working how can you have the same track in the same sounding artists going over every track it sounds like the same thing but yeah. i try not to do that and uh and that was one thing with this this project shot that i wanted to get to and and not so much sounding like everybody else yeah. it wasn't that it was more of that minimalistic type of uh song making gotcha where there's not so much harmony stacks and not so much going on and you know what i mean yeah. i wanted to make it more simple Mm-hmm. Um, that was always something that I wanted to focus on, but you know, I was just letting my artists run wild. But um, other folks like Kanita and Marquise, they had, you know, they was like, try, try more of, of a, uh, you know, I call it minimalistic, but it's not doing too much, saying yeah. what you want to say, but not not putting in too much to muddy and cloud up the the, the mm-hmm. record and the message. So that's what I did on this, and it, it really does. It feels good, but I still, like I said. I still put me in there if I wanted to put this or, or another harmony or another note somewhere. Yeah. I did that. I had the freedom to do that. So it, it 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 really feels good from top to bottom, and I'm hoping everybody else you know feels the same way. I'm sure they will because like that. When I tell you I tweeted, I'm going to interview you. So many people were like, "Where's he at? Is he going to give us new yeah. music?" Where, and I'm like, "We all been there's a, there's new music." <laughs> yeah, it's coming. It's 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 here. It's it's already wrapped. They're all mastered. And uh, yeah, it's it's coming. It's definitely coming. So I, and I think everybody is going to dig it. And let me tell you, it was hard to come up with the single because I I mean, you know, we as artists, we always love almost everything we do. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, when we let people, you know, I let people that mm-hmm. I trust listen to it in the ears that I trust and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. And everybody picked a different record for the single. Oh, wow. So it's this strong record, the strong records. And they and they all evoke emotion and that's what that's what the you know the prime directive was Mm -hmm. um and to do it in the right way are you gonna be hitting the road soon to yeah we got some spot dates right now that that being put on the calendar um some things are really coming october 15th i'm gonna be in uh la with at the uh the kjlh the taste of soul which is really big around here at mm-hmm. this time and uh yeah so that's the first spot i'm gonna be on there's gonna be some other city winery joints coming up and uh yeah so we we got things in the pipeline no well we don't have a city winery out. in charlotte <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> how are we gonna We're get gonna you here it. we don't have one We're, of those <laughs> i'm gonna get there i'm gonna get there i've been in talks with a couple people already okay good yeah. good because um there was um Oh, I don't even remember when it was. When when I first saw you do the the Otis Redding song, and you did that the whistle, I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> I've been practicing that since I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> it threw me off because I wasn't expecting it, and I was like, "Wait!" And then when um, it was, I don't know if you remember the Soul Food Festival that was in Concord. I was yep. backstage, but so I could see everybody's reaction when you did it, and it was like yeah. <laughs> everybody was like. Whoa. Yeah, they were like, where's that coming from? I was like, yeah, it's not somebody backstage, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I, I, I've been practicing that, uh, you know, because a lot of people, if they don't even, if they don't know the record, they pretty much know the whistle part. Right. Uh, even younger, even younger kids, you know, so, uh, so that's, yeah, that's always been something that, that, that I've, I've wanted to do because that's one of my pops, like, absolute favorite records of all time. So mm-hmm. that's the reason why I always put that in my sets and, uh, yeah, there's going to be some other ones, too. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going <laughs> to hop into the fan segment because people send in their questions for you on Twitter. Um, are you ready? All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone wanted to know what your dream duet is. Dream duet. There's a few. 
I love Faith. Faith has always been one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, Jasmine Sullivan is her her voice and her tone is just stupid. Um, yeah, so I'd have to say those are my top two. Okay, that I want to do. Uh, yeah. Okay, I can see that though. I can see that. Yeah, tone. I love tone. That's that's what to me that that's what makes a lasting record. Is, is tone not a lot of runs and all of this kind of stuff but it's that tone that, that pushes it over um someone wanted to know if you're going to do any acting Man, i act every single day <laughs> in the mirror i'll be practicing <laughs> but uh no i hit my I, I hit my man when i got out here i hit my man pooch all up because uh we both grew up in brockton and uh he gave me a couple you know spots to to hit up and mm-hmm. go through because yeah i love acting I love it. I know I can do it, even the voiceover work and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm looking to get into that as well. Okay, please tell him Good question. that we are still mad at him for cheating on girl Melanie with you, Fedora. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so every time we watch Real Housewives, we are still mad. <laughs> I know. I know. Last time I spoke to him, I was like, man, you catch a heat. <laughs> every week. <laughs> I let him know. I let him know. um someone wanted to know um do you feel the pressure or are you more relaxed after you know the river was like huge so there do you feel like there's pressure to to top that or you know kind of like that I guess I always think about Michael Jackson how he was like you know that whole like can he top thriller ever (laughs) that type thing or off the wall Uh but do you, yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of what they meant is like, do you, do you feel like you're more relaxed now or do you still feel like pressure of I've got to meet that same, if that's like what your goal line is or, or yeah. beyond it? At first I did. At first I did. But then I just soon after that, I kind of relaxed because not every record I make is going to be for everybody. Yeah. Um. So it's like I just try to make quality records. I, I try to make records and and uh, that, like I said, that kind of check off the boxes. Is it full of emotion? Am I putting the right feeling across when I'm cutting it? Because mm-hmm. um, after that, if people can't feel me and believe what I'm saying, then what's the point? So I just try to go down the line and check off these boxes with people that I trust, you know, the ears that I trust in my life. And, and, uh, and if I can make a quality record, that's all I can really do. You know what I mean? Because there's a there's a lot of records that I put out now that people probably like more so than even the river. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it, it's like, you know, I have a lot of people hitting me saying brand new is one of their favorites. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Better Man was another one of their joints. A young, you know, young love and, and different joints, Sex in the City, you know, that's a different kind of record. But yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of records that people like more than the river. And mm-hmm. You know, it's it's just I just try to check those boxes when I'm making records and try to put out quality. OK, so um, the next question is, do you have a favorite song of yours? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, the river is always going to be up there because that, that means a lot to my family and, and to myself. Um, but yeah, I fell was one that was really special to me because I, I did that with, with Chris Chris Brew. Uh, you know. Uh so there was a lot of a lot of records in there that I, I worked with a lot of people that I was really I never saw myself working with, like P P Y T with mm-hmm. Rafael Sadiq and mm-hmm. you know, a lot of those special times and, and yeah. working with KG and a lot of the a lot of these um you know, legends in the game and all of that kind of stuff. I work with Kevin Ross, mm-hmm. you know, on, on Sex in the City and, and Brand New and all of those records. So, um, you know, it was just being able to, to mix it up with other artists that I respect yeah. and, uh, and, and love. And, and uh, But yeah, but it's, the river would have to be at the top, but there's other one. Brand New was one that I, I had just, I, I remember writing that in the parking lot. I was driving around in the parking lot in Boston of a supermarket. Mm-hmm. Just watching people and just looking down and writing, looking down and oh, writing, wow. looking up. <laughs> people watching, looking down and writing, and uh, and you know, me and Kevin Ross fi- finished it up. And uh, but yeah, this it's a lot of moments that yeah. I remember writing these records 
that made those special mm -hmm. for me. You know what I mean? Okay. I like that. Um, let's see. They want to know what else are you working on? Um, obviously you're, like you said, the, the masters and all that stuff are, you're, you're getting ready to release that or maybe another mm -hmm. single before the EP comes out, but is there anything mm -hmm. else that you're working on right now? Yeah, a lot of duets and, and writing for some other artists. Um, like I said, Mesa, and I, I deal with Jaguar Wright and Hill Street Soul. I've been working with her a lot and uh, mixing it up with some other artists. That's that's what really what I got in the pipeline uh, with some other male artists as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't want to speak about those yet because they're in the pipeline and we're working on these joints. But, you know, the records could get made, but they could be sitting for a while before they right. get put out. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, but yeah, I'm just, I, I love to just mix it up with other artists and, and uh, have our, have our styles mesh. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, that's the wonderful world of music when you can do that. And uh, everybody, there's no ego or it's really easy to work, you know? So uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Okay. And the last question was, who are you listening to like right now? Who, who, like you get in the car, what's the, what song going to come on or, or what artist is going to come on? <laughs> Man, I pretty much, I really leave it on XM, but when I'm not doing that, I'm listening to like me and my pop's favorites, you know, uh, all those oldies. Um, I love listening to, I can listen to Joe because he's one of my idols, you know. Um, I love D'Angelo. I love uh, Eric Robeson. Mm -hmm. Calvin Richardson all of it you know these are all my people man and I, and I just love listening to their music and, and I get inspiration from it every single day so you're gonna have to come back when the EP drops so we can dig into that because I'm excited to hear it and and absolutely talk about I'm there. whenever you need me you let me know you, I will you know, because we, you know you should have been people, here two so. years ago <laughs> <laughs> I know I know I was going through it though I was going through it but, but whenever you need me you hit me you know where I'm at Okay. All right. Well, tell everybody where they can find you online. All right. On in Instagram and Twitter, I'm at Noel Gordine. That's N-O-E-L-G-O-U-R-D-I-N. Okay. On Facebook, I'm at The Real Noel Gordine. And that's the space in between all of them. The space, real space, and so on. So, um, yeah, reach out to me. I, I love, you know, just mixing it up with y'all, uh, all my supporters. Um, it really means a lot to me that y'all are still here with me. And, and y'all are the ones that fuel me to keep going and, and, and keep making music that I'm making. So thank you. Well, thank you for continuing to make the music. Y'all make sure to check Noel out and, and keep your eyes on his social media so you know when the new EP drops later, I guess, in the winter. <laughs> so thank yep. you, Noel, for joining me today. Thank you, Sha. I really appreciate it. And your show, I'm so proud of you. Keep pushing. Thank you.